A solar plant so fast it's opening early. Power walking takes on a new meaning. Batteries take a bath in nanotubes. A solar charger that tweets that you're being good. And more on Webisode 13 here on Green Tech Weekly. This episode of Green Tech Weekly is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Member, and a dog. Welcome back to Green Tech Weekly. Let's show you some of the greenest tech from around the world. In our first story, the green jobs market is about to get a good boost in Aurora, Colorado. GE is going to open its solar panel factory a whole year ahead of schedule. Wait, doesn't GE already have a similar plant in Colorado? Yes, they have a thin film pilot that they are partners Prime Star Solar located in Denver. At capacity, the new factory will produce enough panels per year to power 80,000 homes. It will be larger than 11 football fields and will employ 355 people. So are both of them going to make similar solar panels? Not quite. This one will be making thin film panels that eliminates the need for refined silicon. This awesome process means that the plant can reportedly produce a solar panel every 10 seconds. Great Scott! Oh wait, that was last week's episode. Uh, the plant opens in January of next year. In our next story, walking down the street could power the street lamps around us if Lawrence Campbell Cook has his way. He is the director of Pevagen Systems. The tiles work by using the kinetic energy of your footsteps. The energy from each step is partially used to light up the tile and then the rest of it is stored in lithium batteries. With 2.1 watts per hour generated, the plan is to make it self-powered crosswalks and street lights. Won't they wear out with all those walkers on them? Don't worry about that because they have an approximate 20 million steps or five year lifespan. Their first customer is the crosswalk between the 2012 Olympic Stadium and the Westfield Stratford City Shopping Center in London. Well, don't they feel special? For our third story, the smart people of Stanford have found a way to improve the capacity of capacitors with nanotubes. Nanotubes again? Those things are everywhere! They found if they dip the supercapacitor in a solution of carbon nanotubes, it will increase the charging capacity up to 45%. After getting stuck on what cheap materials they could use, they added a thin coat of lower conductive material with a higher conductive material like nanotubes. Nanotubes again? Those things are everywhere! Didn't you already say that? Anyway, by doing this, it boosted its capacitance and in turn boosting its ability to hold a charge. Now that they've found out this knowledge, they plan to work on the same technique for batteries. In our next story, we show you how to charge your gadgets with solar power and brag about it on a social website. But it's solar charging and it tweets! The Changer Solar Charging System works with a Miroshi Solar Module giving you up to 4 watts of power per hour. Power hour! This should charge its battery in the charging pad in about 4 hours. The charge is a BYUSB. A what? That's a bring your own USB cord. The battery has enough charge to power a couple of iPhones. You said it would brag what you're doing. The pad will update their company's website with how often you use it and tweet when you use it, if you want. That's better than those, tw those tweeting bathroom scales. I don't like those either. Hey Scott, have you ever heard of a solar powered newspaper? I don't know how to answer that. I mean, all paper owes its existence to the sun, and then there's the fact that you can't read in the dark. Not what I meant. Our next story is about an e-paper from AU Optronics. This SVGA display has an incorporated amorphous silicon PV battery that can power the display by sun or even room light. The recent prototype 6-inch rollable organic TFTP e-paper That would be awesome for Mr. Fantastic! He could put it in his pocket when he stretches! The company had been telling us for some time that they would be making this, but until now we had not seen a working model. Now let's see how long it takes for them to make it so I can buy it. You got a point there. In our last story, one of the biggest issues with computing is that the more power that you use, the hotter it gets. But what if we use that excess heat to power the computer itself? But then I can't use my laptop's vent to dry my hands. 
The Physical and Technical Institute of Braunschweig, Germany has discovered that by heating one side of a magnetic tunnel, they can control the flow of electricity across its poles. Magnetic tunnels, that's what's used in magnetic RAM and on the heads of the hard disk drives, right? Exactly. This means that the heat can be recycled back into the device. This is still in its infant stages, so we are years away from seeing this in the mainstream. So Scott, I think you would have a lot of time to learn how to use the hand dryer in the bathroom. But it makes so much noise. Thanks for watching us this week. Keep up with the show on YouTube, right here. Follow us all the usual ways on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, remember to rethink it green. Say, I'm gonna get you can. I'm gonna get you can. Sir, I hate litter. I hate litter. Recycle, don't litter. Recycle. Dang it. Hey, if you noticed today's show didn't have any sponsors, we're still looking for some. So if you wanna be our sponsor, send your info to greentechweekly at gmail.com and we'll be able to get together. Thanks again.